the more time you and I spend around these hobbies or fascinations we have around pens or notebooks or stationery, the more we think it's normal to behave like this. I just want to share a few funny things about the habits or behaviours that you and I may be expressing without realising that we are in our own little world because of our fascination for stationery and pens. Pen spotting. You know what it's like. You go into a bookstore or a stationery department, perhaps within a larger department store, and you go to look at notebooks and journals, and you are, regardless of whether you're aware of it, subconsciously looking at the other people, looking at the things that you're interested in. So if you go and look at a bunch of moleskin notebooks, or you find yourself picking up and looking at the latest colourways or ribbons being offered with Leuchtturm notebooks and other types of stationery, and you find yourself unconsciously or very consciously looking at the other people in the same department thinking, oh, I wonder what they're going to choose, or oh, when they've put that one back, I'd like to have a look at it. Or you might go into a library and set out your paraphernalia on the desk where you're going to work, and you'll glance around the room to see who is working with pen and paper, who might be using a notebook or an A4 pad or a spiral bound notebook, and what sort of pens they're using. Maybe you find yourself looking at what sort of pencil case they've got. Is it a nice vintage leather case, perhaps? Or a cheap and cheerful school pencil case that you can pick up for a dollar or a pound anywhere? Or you spend time on YouTube looking at videos of what fountain pens or propelling pencils somebody's using to complete their journal, and you think it's completely normal. And it is in our little bubble, but for a lot of other people, it's completely irrelevant, and they don't notice any of that. They go to a library and they look for books. They go to a department store and they buy the stationery that they want, and all these other observations that are the minutiae of everyday life to you and I, they don't exist to the rest of the world. Going into a stationery store, you don't need any more items of pen or paper or notebook style or format. You have a ton of them unused at home, sitting on your shelves. And yet when you go into town for some other purpose, a different activity to do some more conventional shopping, you just happen to walk into the stationery store. You don't just browse, you look at everything in the store. You think, oh, if I just had that one, oh, I like the new colorway on that, or oh, I've only got 200 international cartridges at home, but maybe if I got a couple of other boxes, just in case. You're expressing compulsive hoarding behavior, wanting to shop for things that you've already got at home, but it's so much fun, you have to do it. Here's another one, pen regret. You moved house or you changed your work environment and somehow along the way you lost a particular pen. You put it down somewhere, you've left it behind in an office or a, a home environment and you can't think what happened to it and you long to rebuy that same pen but you think to yourself maybe I should just get something different, treat myself to something better or you go for the new pen that you've been lusting after and you still rebuy the pen that you had a few months ago. Reasons to love your favourite notebooks or pens. You've already got the A6 Estrella notebook, or you've got an A5 Moleskin, or you've got a beautiful ring-bound journal that fits nicely inside your briefcase or your rucksack, but you still go online to look at what other people think of that item of stationery or the pen that you use as one of your everyday carriers, just in case somebody has a different perspective, just in case somebody can introduce you to a different type of ink, or perhaps they've got a different mechanism for attaching a fountain pen or your favourite biro to the front of that particular binder for that journal, and you might have missed out. Maybe they can give you a little tip or an idea on where you can get one of those for yourself. Sometimes we watch these online review videos to see if somebody's got exactly the same item, 
and whether their opinion is in accord with ours and why they like it or how dare they have a different perspective and decide that they're not going to buy it again. You're so used to using an A4 journal and having that as your regular go-to when you leave the house or when you work at a desk in an office you're visiting. And so when somebody gives you an A5 journal for Christmas or a birthday, or it's a random gift from one of the companies that you work with, you think, oh, I'm not sure I, I can deal with this because it's different. I've always used A4 stationery, so I don't know what to do with A5 or A6, or somebody gives you a book with 110 pages and you're always used to 200 sheets of paper in the notebook that you like to work with. Guess what? After a while, you adjust to it. If you're used to using a medium nib on a fountain pen and a well-meaning friend or relative gifts you a new pen that you perhaps wouldn't have bought yourself, you look at it and say, oh, this is grotesque or this is too large for me to use. And then you try it and it's absolutely beautiful. You're writing with it for a few minutes and you're muttering to yourself thinking, oh, this is, this is just not right. I would have bought something different. And after a few minutes, you're thinking to yourself, actually, this works quite well. I quite like the way this nib flows or the particular ink that I've been given is actually quite attractive. Maybe you're used to using a nice Staedtler or a Mitsubishi pen and it's got a 0.3 nib or a 0.4 nib and somebody gives you a 0.6 and they look really nice. And you think, oh, I can't possibly use these because I'd have to change my handwriting ever so slightly or the way I put pressure on the paper that I use might be different, or this ink might bleed through the notebook that I've got currently. Well, listen, you try it on a different form of paper, you try it in a different style of notebook, and actually you think, no, for some of the things that I can use my pens for, this will be really nice. And it only takes a little bit of time for you to move from, oh no, I couldn't possibly use that, to thinking, actually, I think I'll keep these, I won't give them away. I'll start to use them and I'll experiment with how I can use them in my journal. What about the quest for the perfect pen? You've already got a pen box with 20 or 30 or 50 pens that you love and you like to use. Maybe you've got five or six pens that are pretty much in use every single week, but there might be a pen out there somewhere that you're missing out on, that if you just had it, it would make your penmanship better. It would make you more productive as a poet or a note taker. If you just had this new pen, you could write your next novel much faster and the ideas would flow just as the ink does onto the pages of your journal. And so you go online and you go into stationery stores and you search for that new item that might be absolutely perfect when you have a bunch of other pens sitting at home on your desk or in your pen pots feeling neglected for lack of use. You hate the notebook that you can't afford. You know there are people out there spending 30 or 40 dollars on a notebook and you think to yourself that's outrageous I'm happy with spending 10 pounds or 10 dollars on the item that I actually want. And so you poo-poo the idea of something that is more expensive because it's beyond your price range. Or you laugh at the idea of spending two or three hundred pounds on a new fountain pen because you've always got by by spending no more than a hundred. We forget that for most people, two or three dollars on a pen is far more than they want to spend. We hate on the pens or the stationery that we can't afford. We go online and we see that people are reviewing items that might have cost 40 or $50 for a beautiful looking journal. Or maybe they've spent £300 on a beautiful leather briefcase. I saw somebody the other day talking about a £300 fountain pen. Have you ever done this? You hate on a pen that you can't actually afford. I was always very disdaining around Mont Blanc fountain pens until I went into a pawnbroker's shop last year and I bought myself a beautiful Mont Blanc pen for a fraction of its retail or high street price. And I, d I love it. I love the design. I love the craftsmanship. And I love the way that the ink flow is so smooth from the minute that I uncap the pen and I'm ready to write with it. 
But for years I hated on the brand because I couldn't conceive of paying four or five hundred pounds for a fountain pen. Three hundred was okay. Two hundred and fifty was absolutely fine. But four hundred and fifty was a ridiculous thing to do. And when I bought my own fountain pen for a superb price, all of a sudden I fell in love with the brand. Have you done that? Are you hating on the pens that are out of your reach and saying, oh no, I couldn't do with this or that would be too much. It's just outrageous. Actual fact, all it is is that we adjust to what we can afford and we get comfortable. Maybe you go online and you see a pen that's $2,000 and you think to yourself, oh no, that's terrible. I could never possibly do that. And yet if one of those came into your life at an appropriate price level, all of a sudden you might go, hey, this pen's really beautiful. I like the stories associated with it. The design is fabulous. I'll have one of those. Most people don't want to spend a couple of dollars on a writing instrument. But the idea that you and I will spend 10 or 20 or 50 times that on something that we think is beautiful, it's exquisitely designed, and it has a story that speaks to us and allows us to feel more expressive or to have a sense of creativity by having that item in our hands, that goes way over the heads of the majority of society. You and I are in a world of our own. The fact that most people would laugh at spending more than two or three dollars on a writing instrument is just because we are in a different place from where they are. But once upon a time for us, two dollars or three dollars or five pounds was plenty to spend on a pen or a propelling pencil that we would use occasionally or even all day long. Notebooks and pens, but notebooks as exquisite things that we can carry with us, in which we can capture memories, that we can draw in or sketch in or do watercolour paintings in. These are beautiful things of high quality paper, but they are probably also beautifully bound. Maybe they are stitched internally. They probably have several silk ribbons to allow us to separate the pages and place flowers in for pressing, all sorts of things that we can do with our exquisite and expensive notebooks. But for most people, they are not looking to capture ideas. There is no concept that they should be sketching and capturing memories with a fountain pen or a paintbrush or a beautiful pencil. You and I forget that we are in this special little niche place where we consider stationery and pens and paper to be beautiful in any form at all. For a lot of people, those are just functional things. Why should they spend money on it? There's absolutely no value. They can make notes on their phone. They can tap details into a PC or a laptop. But you and I have a different approach and those pens and pencils allow us to take a beautiful notebook and a high quality paper and craft something that to us is completely special. The ceremony of stationery. Stationery and pens is a way of ordering your life. Do you, like me, put your A6 moleskin notebooks on the shelf in a certain order? How about the way that you store your pens? Do you perhaps have a pot for fountain pens and you don't like it when somebody in the household accidentally puts a biro into one of your pen pots and you think, no, no, that's for my fountain pens. The biros go in another place. Maybe you sort your pens by barrel colour or by groupings of nib size, whether we're talking about a fountain pen or perhaps a brush point pen, and you look at the sizes on the caps and you like to have them in sequence or in order. Do you not realise that we are unusual in doing this? The way that we respond to and cultivate a special nature around our stationery, whether it's the books or the pens or the pencils, doesn't matter. But we are in this tiny little group. We have reverence for our stationery and we have almost ceremonies of the way that we maintain and look after these things which are so important to us. This is a minority group behaviour and we need to remember that when we're out of our studies and away from our special places where we feel creative and productive with our writing or our crafting and we go out into the world and we spend time with the people we care about and the people whom we love but for whom a biro is a one or a two dollar item. A fountain pen is something old-fashioned and quirky. 
Not everybody lovingly cleans the nibs of their fountain pens. Perhaps you store your biros by the level of gold content within the barrels. Maybe you store your ink cartridges by colour and also by fountain pen type. Maybe you just have a ceramic pot and you drop all your cartridges in there, hoping that when you're ready to find a new cartridge, you can get the one you want from the bowl on your desk. But you and I, we forget the fact that the majority of the world has no interest in any of this. We're members of a very special stationery, notebook, pen society, and most people don't give a damn about that, and they don't value what we value so much. Enjoy your notebooks, your journals, your fountain pens, your multiple different ink types and nib sizes, and enjoy the fact that you do what you do because you love it, and it's a part of knowing who you are.